and I'm going to ask you to start to lead us in prayer. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for this day that you have made. We purpose to rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, though, Lord God, bodies may not feel 100%, though we may be tired, we thank you, Lord God, for energizing us through the Holy Spirit. We ask you, Father God, to clear out our minds, to give us to be able to focus that during this time together, teach us those things that we have need of so that we, we can be successful at mentoring, that we can be successful at helping to lead others into places of discipleship, places of, of success in careers. Uh, and Father, through it all, teach us uh, how the Holy Spirit mentors us and teaches us every single day. Forgive those things that are not like you in times that we've missed opportunities to minister to others. Uh, open the eyes of our understanding that we would know the call that you have already put us uh, put on us. And Lord God, and we lift Kavitha, Kavitha up before you, whatever her situation is, Lord God, that it would be straightened out, that she would be able to go forth in the manner that you have already ordained. We speak healing, we speak, we speak energy, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tara. Okay, I'm going to share my screen and pull up the outline. Okay. Just going to put it up from my um okay. This week five. Mm, let me see which one this is. Should be this one. good okay so this is our outline for the week um the powerpoint presentation which we're going to go through together is methods of mentoring because we're focusing on methods and functions of mentoring and then um, there is a YouTube program um, presentation on women's mentoring program. I'm going to have you watch that and then read this article by Wu, et cetera, Social Skill in Workplace Mentoring Relationships. Um, there should be a link for this article in the library. So I was trying to put the link into the, into the course, but I wasn't able to do that. So if you have a problem, let me know, but there should be a link there. And then having watched the video and read the article, the discussion is social skills and mentoring relationships. How does social skill influence the formation and cultivation of a mentoring relationship? So in that discussion, you will use both the women's mentoring program, um, YouTube presentation and this article to respond to this question. Okay. Mm -hmm. The second discussion, you will read this article and I, I, I have the link in the course. I'll, I'll show you it when we go into the course. It's called Career Mentoring for Women, New Horizons, Expanded Methods. And then um, having read that, I would like us to discuss this in the context of Christian ministry what career and psychosocial functions will mentoring women provide in the context of Christian ministry? So that's pretty focused. And then of course the Zoom meeting. So this is our, and you are welcome to join. The online chapel is optional, but you're welcome to join it. It's open every week in the course, or it should be. In discussion, in discussion two, mm -hmm. uh, are we we're using the uh, video and the reading as well um if you want like to use the video in the discussion too you can you can okay. yes and also given what we did last week about mentoring and christian um women in ministry you could use mm -hmm. that material too in the discussion okay. it's not just focused in on what we're currently doing you know, okay. so you can reference that, certainly. Okay, any other question on this? No, that's it. Okay, good. So let me get out of this. I'll stop sharing and then I will go 
let me go to the course so we can look at the what is but I, I guess I'll share again. Yes, I need to. Okay. Okay, good. Yes, I was in the course already, but let me just go right back to, um, Oops, how do I get out of this? I need to get out of this. Okay. I want to clip out of this. Let's see. Hmm. I am a little stuck here. I need to get out of this. Um, how do I get out of this? Maybe your arrow, back arrow button? Will that take you Thank out? You. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. let's try yeah. it again. That's what it should have done. Click, click over to where your um, popular uh, login is. Go back over there. The, oh, over, yeah, over the middle there. Don't click it out. You're going to click no, it out. I shouldn't oh. click it out. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Go back in Let again see. and see where you where you want to go. Oh, yes. Good. Good. I'm back in it. Okay. So we, this is week five, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. Okay. So this is the PowerPoint presentation. And these are the two discussions that we talked about. Okay. okay. Methods and functions of mentoring. Um, before I do the PowerPoint presentation, is there any... Um, as a question for clarification that you have about the coursework, we talked about the um, what you need to do to catch up. But is there any other question about the coursework? Mm, not that I can think of. Okay. Um, next week we're going to be looking at the um, the major paper. And perhaps this week I'll send you uh, something on it. But um, okay, let's look at the presentation methods and functions of mentoring. Um, this is a brief overview with application to mentoring women in the professions. In week one, we had a brief look at types of mentoring and types of mentoring relationships. Uh, this week, we will expand on these issues. First, we begin with a caveat that best practices in mentoring is specific to the context in which mentoring occurs. So there's not one best practice about how uh, mentoring should be done. We always have to pay attention to the context when we look at mentoring, when we try to assess um, its results. Best practices in mentoring are difficult to identify due primarily to the complexity of the mentoring process. And this is a quote from Brondick and Serby. They grounded their work in the field of education and much of the literature, and as you see, in terms of the literature that we have been looking at, much of it comes out of the field of education. Um, therefore, addressing alternate forms of, uh, sorry, thereby addressing alternate forms of mentoring and diverse cultures, forms of mentoring. And there are several forms of mentoring, some of which you probably are aware of. For example, the basic one, the traditional mentoring, where a mentor is paired with a protege. Then there's what is known as cascade mentoring, and this is um, specifically, but not wholly, in the context of education. A professor may supervise graduate students or advances undergraduates in research, who in turn supervise lower division undergraduates. I um, mean, in many uh, graduate schools where you have both a graduate and undergraduate program, a graduate student uh, 
may be working with his or her professor on their research, but that graduate student may also be working with undergraduate students, um, helping them, guiding them in their research. So that's what is known as cascade mentoring. Then there is e-mentoring. I don't know if you're familiar with e-mentoring, but it has, um, it has become popular in the last, I would say about 20 years. It's a means of providing guided mentoring relationship using online software or email. And then there is peer mentoring where colleagues provide support um, for example, you may have student-to-student -student mentoring. That's an example of peer mentoring. Uh, and you provide support, encouragement, and information to fellow colleagues in a non-hierarchical relationship. In the traditional mentoring um, relationship, there's definitely a hierarchy, the mentor to the mentee. But in peer mentoring, that's non-hierarchical. Then there's what is called the mentoring circles, where you may have a gathering of six to eight individuals who meet regularly with one or two mentors. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comment on that? Mm -mm. I have um, I participated in um, a couple of them all, you know, in my time, just, you know, things that I've done, uh, in, including the mentoring circle. Um, okay. and, I like mentoring circles because uh, you get the feedback from several different people at one time, and uh, and it keeps it keeps you to me uh, more alert to the needs, and you can you can add or take away as you're going along, uh, and it's not just that one on one. And I, and for me, it also keeps the relationships uh, from mentor to to mentees from becoming just a, um, from getting off track because okay. everybody, you know what I'm saying? You were spread between all of them and not just one person. So okay. it helps with boundaries. Okay. And I, I, I recall um, the proverb that says, there is wisdom in a multitude of mentors, as it were. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Co-mentoring, forms of mentoring. Co-mentoring. There's mutual mentorship of a pair of close collegial friends committed to facilitating each other's developing. Somewhat like um, peer mentoring. Then there's the apprentice approach where the mentor aids the protege in becoming a valued member of a profession. Then there's the hierarchical relationship between a mentor and a protege in which mentors have the information and more power so you are giving to the protege that is hierarchical mm -hmm. there are cultural expressions of mentoring um, the european mentoring model is mainly a non-directive approach whereas the american model has several aspects of directedness such as sponsorship networking the African concept of mentoring focuses on community and connectedness. And it suggests that the traditional Western concepts of mentoring may not fit this cultural value. I'll stop here for comments from you on that. Hmm. Okay, explain, let's go back to the African con concept of mentoring. Uh, it, when it says it focuses on community, so that's doing more of what we were talking about a moment ago, where it's a collective? Yes, 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 it okay. would be, yes. I don't see where that would be adverse to a traditional Western concept because, I mean, because since we use so many different kinds, I think it, to me it would fit without a problem. Because, like I said, that's the one I prefer. <laughs> I like that one. The the, the African community mm -hmm. kind of yeah. mentoring. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because everybody brings something to the table. Yes. And and so when you're talking about a situation or something that you're trying to to help the collective with, somebody else might have something you know that fits in there a little more succinct than what we might be giving it. 
and, and then you're also, to me, when you are dealing in that way, it helps with, helps, helps the mentor to break things down in a way uh, that maybe we, we, might be, we might be speaking here, where we might need to speak here. And when you have that collective, you've got to get everybody in there. Okay. I agree with your observation. Okay. In the ensuing section, we will look at mentoring programs designed to increase the number of women in senior management roles. Um, it comes from the work of Dworkin et al., Career Mentoring for Women, New Horizons, Expanded Methods. The report begins with a description of factors that cause for the career mentoring of women. Um, some of these factors, the lack of progress in women gaining parity in the workplace, particularly as regards attaining leadership positions. Then there is the pay disparity, the exclusion of women from meetings, promoting men on potential and women on achievement, not making diversity a priority, and not making sure that there is representation at all levels. And these are some of the, the reasons for a specific focus on career mentoring for women. Um, is there anything here that you would like to comment on at or have had experience with? Mm. I... I mean, I, I have any really real problem on that area. It, now, because see, when I'm thinking that as far as my career has been as concerned, even prior to this, um, it was wasn't so much the the problem of, of male female situation. It was more a problem uh, of um, culture and uh, and race because of the areas that I've been in. So I've seen some of these, but it, it was in that arena as well. And and in that, it would have been nice to have had someone to mentor to say, okay, you know, this is the way you maneuver here in that situation. One place that I worked, I was the morning anchor and the evening anchor position came available. And and, and that's, you know, choice. That's what yes. you want to be in the anchor. And, um, and so, you know, having all the experience that I had, I went into my news director. I said, you know, I'd like to, you know, be considered for this position. Uh, he very nicely took me to lunch, um, explained that that was not going to be possible, being very careful not to say race or anything that I could go back and say, okay, you were discriminating or whatever, and gave me a raise. <laughs> and so I was like, seriously, you're going to pay me not to want to do this job. Um, and uh, so it would have been nice if there was a way or if somebody had already been through that to say, okay, this is how you deal with that. This is how you come back with that uh, and, and how to maneuver to end up with the position that you want. But uh, it was a station that, you know, they they kind of fit the quotas of what they needed for as race was concerned. And so they were not interested in putting you into a very key position. So that's how I've dealt with those things. That's the, the area that I've had to deal with that. Mm, that's interesting. I guess in that situation, they, they, um, and I take it that person was your boss. He would mm -hmm. not have functioned as a mentor to you. Mm -hmm. You would have had to have that mentoring done by somebody else from outside yeah. of the 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 um, station or somebody else, not him, because mm -hmm. he was going to protect the culture. And exactly. clearly the culture said, thus far and no further. So mm -hmm. he was acknowledging um, by that Perry's offer as it were he was as it were shutting you down <laughs> exactly exactly and yeah. so it would have been nice to have somebody who you're right from the outside yeah, it would have um, had to be somebody from the outside it would not have been him. Maybe an agent or somebody who could say no this is what you do to change that situation this is mm -hmm. what you do to, uh, 
you know, get a serious consideration for that situation, but, you know, not having that, you know. Yes. But I, you know, at the same time, whenever the evening people were not there, I was the one who filled in. So <laughs> it looks like that. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Some more factors. The underrepresentation of women in boardrooms and executive offices. Uh, persistent inequities. Few executives are proactive about diversity. So these are some factors that um, certainly um, forces us to look at mentoring women for um, professional positions. The purpose of this study um, by Dworkin, and this is the study you're going to um, look at in the second discussion, was to better understand the nature of mentorship and how they might differ by gender and geographical location, specifically focusing on businesses within the United States and Europe. How mentorships are helpful. There are three key areas, career planning, coaching, and guidance, mm -hmm. protection and career risk management, and increasing the aspiration level and providing a role model. So these are three areas where mentorship becomes very helpful in a, in a professional setting. The benefits of mentoring. Mentoring programs can be effective in helping women chart pathways around barriers to leadership for a variety of reasons. Mentors lend legitimacy to an individual. They offer inside information regarding job-related functions. They provide guidance and training in the political organization of the organization. Mentors provide both career functions and psychosocial functions. They can lead to women becoming more successful in organizations in terms of higher salary and promotions. So, and then the, the last page just has the references to the articles. Um, I am currently uh, mentoring a young woman who is in what I would call a positive professional relationship with the, her boss, the person who hired her, because mm -hmm. Well, in that culture, in that it's a it's a um, educational um, institution. They encourage their workers to um, increase their educational experience. So the, the the school will pay for the workers that they identify um, as such to go on and do their doctorate. Mm. And I think that's excellent. And that yes. is certainly, that's a very good commitment to, to workers. And it says to the workers that we value what you have to give. Mm -hmm. And we are going to support you in pursuing higher education. It's a, it's a university. So that's positive. And um, in, in that context, she needs to make a decision uh, quickly in terms of the program that she's going to enroll in to do mm -hmm. her doctorate and it's going to be paid for. So that's pretty positive. That is. Yes. That is. Yes. Is that, a, is that an American company? It, it has American um, connections, but it's, it's in the Caribbean. Oh, I've always wanted to move there. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, it, it, but I, I find that um, that is a very positive yes. workplace. Yes, yes, very positive. And that is commendable. Mm -hmm. And there are organizations mm -hmm. like that that commit to seeing workers improve and are prepared to pay for that. Now, when that happens then, as a worker, you can't just pick up and leave either. Once you have um, 
yes, you would mm -hmm. have to, you know, that would be expected. But um, who who wants to quarrel with that? Mm -hmm. That organization shows commitment and you in turn would have to reciprocate that kind of commitment. So that's a positive mm -hmm. professional experience that she's having. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it certainly forces her to make a decision in terms of, because an, another colleague who I think was hired about the same time she was hired, and she was just hired a few months ago, he is already um, enrolled in a, in a program. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So wow. that is, that's positive in terms of what we are reading about here. Um, in the discussion last week, you raised something that I responded to. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it. Did you? Um, let me see. Hold on a minute. Let me. Um, I can't see my screen. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Where, hold on. Uh -huh, I can look. Sure. Just. Uh, what? Yeah. Was it? Oh, my Was it the one for um last this week four? Week four, yes. I could stop sharing and pull it up if you don't find it. Okay, that'd probably be quicker. Okay, sorry. Let's see. And now I have to get back. No. Now I have to get back to Okay. Okay, I'm in now. Sure so it is, okay. Discussion, discussion, discussion. Is it the, the developing mentor skills? Discussion one, two. Which discussion was it? Uh, that's the one I, I, I I'm going in now to see because. Okay. The boundaries. Um. Let me. Sh can you? Did I? Sh can um. you see my screen? Oh, okay. Mm, okay. Yes, we talked about boundaries. I talked about boundaries and mentoring. Talked about boundaries, and I am glad you raised that because um, I I don't recall identifying that issue, and so I um, raised here the issue. Um, I said the literature shows that we shouldn't take for granted the issue of boundaries in a mentoring relationship. It's, it's critical that from the beginning of a mentoring relationship, we should set boundaries. These include the, the rules, the guidelines, the limits and expected standards of the relationship. And we need to be clear on expectation in terms of contact, confidentiality, and accountability. Those are three big areas in mentoring mm -hmm. that you need to agree on from the beginning, and that is setting boundaries. In fact, um, when I looked at the issue of boundaries at various um, uh, colleges, schools that have mentoring programs, especially um, where they have mentoring programs for young people or for youths, the issue of boundaries become um, even more um, important because you're dealing with um, a younger group of, of people and mm. they may come from a different culture and have certain behavioral expectations, etc. So it's important, for example, um, just in terms of the use of language in, mm -hmm. in, in the relationship, um, you want to be, be clear to um, these young people 
about the kind of language that is acceptable mm -hmm. in, in your dialogue with them. They may be accustomed to just using, you know, any language at any time, but you want to deal with the issue of language. You also want to deal with the issue of um, relationship across the sexes, um, mm -hmm. how to relate, etc. Mm -hmm. Those are examples of boundary setting issues that you want to address at the beginning of your mentoring relationship, especially when you're working across the generational divide. But in any mentoring relationship, you want to set boundaries. Mm -hmm. So it is important that mentors be trained in this area in, in terms of setting boundaries, how to mm -hmm. set boundaries, etc. So these are some suggestions that I found in this website. You need to have a boundary discussion on topics such as time commitment. How often will you meet? How often will you communicate? Where, etc. Planning and preparing for meetings sharing of personal information, sharing of professional information, introduction to contacts or professional networks, availability, preferred methods of contact, uh, confidentiality, mm -hmm. accountability, openness to suggestions or opinions or triggers. Um, I find the reference to triggers important because Depending on the nature of the mentoring relationship, um, it may be that the person who is being mentored, the client, there's some things that would trigger certain kinds of behavior or certain responses. Mm -hmm. It would be good for the mentor to know what these triggers are so that he or she would avoid them. Or if you are going to um, raise issues that trigger certain negative responses that you are aware of them and that you address them in the mentoring relationship right i, I agree because if someone has a problem with uh, rejection and you're telling them like we talked about in writing uh we both talked about being bold and in in, in, in uh, critiquing uh mm -hmm. and you say something it could shut them down yes. because they think oh, they're rejecting me and yes. really that's going on um and i i had one person who just would show up all the time anytime and be like okay wait a minute i need to get out of bed i mean just and, and i i couldn't figure out what was going on but there had not been a formal establishing of this is the time that you can come and you need to let me know ahead of time you can't just show up um and so i've learned that the hard way <laughs> i learned that the hard way uh, and I think that we have to be so very careful about sharing of personal information because you want to say, you want to believe that they will be able to keep some confidences, but if, if you share too many things, too much, it, one, it can overwhelm them, two, it could end up being something that you really did not intend for anybody else to really know about your life, and then all of a sudden, there it is. Um, so we have to be very careful. I find that keeping it in a professional realm by, and I'm not a really a title person, but sometimes titles are necessary. Mm -hmm. So especially, you know, if you're dealing with someone um, in a, a church or what have you, then titles become very important mm -hmm. because then they know mm -hmm. we're not buddies, we're not gonna hang out, mm -hmm. we're not, you know, you know, you're not coming over to, you're, this is what's happening. This is, this is where we are. And when we keep, when we use a title, when they're using a title, then it stays in their mind. Um, mm -hmm. you know, then it gives me more freedom to me to be who I am, to yeah. laugh, to be comfortable, whatever, because I know they still have they still have to know, okay, within yes. this context, yeah. right here, uh, and stuff. So I, I found that, you know, I don't let I don't let, let and definitely not young people, uh, call me by my first name. Yeah. Um, because that changes things. There was a young lady, uh, she got in, wanted to get into um, broadcasting. And I had talked to her, given her some information. I mean, I watched her pretty much grow up. And then she became an adult and she would call me by my first name. And I'd say, you know, at first I thought, no. Okay. And I would address back to her, 
in a formal way. I was, you know, or I would write back to her, making sure to use titles so she would know. So finally, I saw her in, at a restaurant one day. She had gotten married. She introduced me to her husband, and we were talking, and she was using my name. And I thought, oh, this is not going to work. So I didn't say anything then, but then when she contacted me later on, I said, no, you cannot address me by my first name. Mm-hmm. And she did mm-hmm. not understand why she could not. She wanted to continue, so I just cut her off. I said, no, if you're going to disrespect me in this realm, I have to let it go. And I just cut her off and, um, and stuff. And then I found out later from another person in a similar situation with her that she had done the same thing with them and they had to cut her off. So I saw that as just a place of rebellion with her as she wasn't ready for a, that more mature situation. And, and, and I think too, not excusing her behavior, but some of it might have been cultural too. Um, because I find um, young people today, they want to um, break down barriers, as it were. And so they think that the way to do that is to address everybody by their first name. Mm-hmm. And there is, there is a, um, I, don't, I, I use the word tacit, but I'm not sure if it's tacit but there is a, a, a rejection of the culture, the, the culture that is formal, that the traditional norms, the traditional, right. Um, mm-hmm. the, the, the traditional boundaries, that, that's it. There seems mm-hmm. to be, or the, there is a rejection of traditional boundaries in relationships. And I think in, in, in this context, it is even more important that when you're in a formal mentoring relationship, you clarify boundaries. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, it becomes That's even um, more important. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, but I'm glad, like I said, I'm glad you raised the issue of boundaries because I had not addressed it before. And I didn't think I had addressed, I had planned to address it in the course, but it is important. Mm-hmm. Yes, okay. Okay, so that brings us to the end. Is there any other question you have? Um, (laughs) One of the things I'm going to ask both you and Kavita to do is to get into the discussions a little er earlier because um, I like to get into the discussion too. But if you wait until Sunday evening to get into it, then I'm not going to be able to respond to you in a timely manner. So I'm going okay. to remind you to do that. Yeah, this, this last week was impossible. I was trying to get ready for the sermon and yeah. everything was just kind of coming at me. I was like, oh, I can't get it done. So, yes. uh, but anyway, we'll be on track. We'll get back on track. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm okay. ready now. Okay. Well, have a great, great week and feel 100%. Thank you. I definitely am working on that. And you have a great week too. Looking forward to seeing your um, your responses. Okay. All righty. Bless on you. Bye bye.